How cool would it be if you could create a charting component in Adobe Animate CC that would dynamically animate to a given value? Well, today I will show you exactly that, so stay tuned. Animate CC is a great tool for interactive web animations, including infographics with charts. Yet it would be rather unnerving if you had to create the animations for each bar individually, especially when these values are subject to change. So today I will show you how you can create a reusable charting component that will dynamically animate from the current state to a new value. Let's take a look at the result. For demonstration purposes, I'm using random values here. So whenever I click on the random button, the charts get updated to a random value. Of course, in real-life projects, you could easily inject real data here. Let's take a look at the project. As you can see, the charting components are movie clips. They are basically the same symbol. I'm just using copies here for using different colors. The upside of using symbols is that I can easily reuse them as components in different projects. Let's take a closer look at the animation now. It is a straightforward shape tween to create the three-dimensional perspective look. If you want me to do a video on how to create this animation, let me know in the comments. As you might notice, the animation goes to frame 100, which makes it easier to work with percentage values for determining the end position on the timeline, as frame 100 equals 100%. Now, in order to determine the animation dynamically, we need a little script. It is placed in an action at the very first frame of the movie clip. First of all, we use this dot stop to prevent autoplay. Then we add a function called setValue to the movie clip object this, which expects a value. This allows us to set a new value from outside of the symbol scope. We will get to that in a bit. Within this setValue method, we call another function called animateToFrame. This is the function that takes care of the dynamic animation. It requires a few lines of code, but don't worry about the details here. I'll walk you through it. It basically checks at which frame the target, which means the symbol in this case, is currently at and determines the amount of steps necessary to get to the new frame. In order to avoid long animations, we either use every second frame a step or every tenth frame when the difference between start and end frame is bigger than 10. We then use the ticker provided by CreateJS and the go to and stop method to reposition the playhead on the timeline for each tick. This is necessary to be able to go backwards on the timeline as well when the new value is lower than the initial value. We also make sure that we don't go lower than the first frame or further than the last one. Well, this is pretty much it. It really looks more complicated than it is and remember that this is a dynamic function so you can use it every time you need a dynamic animation. Just copy and paste the code. Last but not least, we dispatch a custom ready event to prevent asynchronous issues, for example, when setting initial values such as labels dynamically. Now we can move on to the main timeline. Here we use the reference to each symbol instance to inject the value using our setValue method. Plain and simple, right? Only we are using random values here, as I mentioned before. But I'm sure you get the idea. Well, that's it for today. I hope I could give you some new perspective and insights into working with Animate CC. Feel free to leave a comment or post any questions in the comment section below. Stay tuned and subscribe for more videos and tips and tricks for interactive web animation. Happy animating!